in this video, we're going to have some more World Movie League action with two Group A matches. Match 1 sees Constantine taking on Captain Marvel, and Match 2 sees Green Lantern vs Shazam. Hey, it's me, Commissioner AP, and welcome back to another World Movie League video. And in this video series, we're trying to find out the ultimate movie uh, each season in the World Movie League. This season, we're looking at comic book-based movies, movies that were based on comic books or graphic novels. So as I said in the intro, we've got some some really good matches, uh, more Group A matches for today's episode. Uh, the matches will be Constantine versus Captain Marvel, and then we're going to see the uh, the matchup of Green Lantern versus Shazam. Uh, two great matches. I'm really looking forward to uh, to judging and to go through. And they've both been well. All these four movies have been really fun to rewatch uh, prior to making this episode. So that's been really fun. But uh, as always, with with each episode of the World Movie League, the round one matches they will be judged uh, judged in a certain way. And as they were in the last episode, the way I will judge each content. Uh, each match between these two, uh, between the, with these four movies, it'll be obviously Constantine versus and Captain Marvel. The rules will be it will be judged upon best characters in the movie, and then it will be judged upon best high scoring moments, and that is uh, the best moments in the movie, the movie that has the most and the best high scoring moments, the best moments overall. And then, last but not least, it comes to Desert Island Choice. So it's a free choice contest between uh, the movies. I will be judging them and I will be giving you my choices to see which movie goes through to the next stage of the World Movie League. So let's get to the movies. So let's take a look at match number one. Released in 2005, Constantine tells the story of exorcist John Constantine, who takes on demons who possess humans. The horror movie stars Keanu Reeves as John Constantine. It also stars Rachel Weisz, Shia LaBeouf and Tilda Swinton. And now let's take a look at Constantine's opponent. Released in 2019, Captain Marvel is the first female solo movie in the MCU. The film tells the origin story of fighter pilot Carol Danvers becoming the superhero Captain Marvel. The cast of this movie stars Brie Larson in the main role alongside Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, Jude Law as Yon Rog, and Ben Mendelsohn as Talos. So match number one, Constantine versus Captain Marvel. Uh, let's just talk briefly about both these movie movies and the rewatches, how I felt rewatching these movies. Uh, first of all, Constantine is a movie I've only seen a handful of times and never watched it initially on its on its initial release. Didn't really it kind of went on the radar for me personally. Uh, I feel like a lot of people feel the same with Constantine. It is one of those Keanu Reeves movies that went under the radar. Kind of came out just at the back end of the Matrix movies really. And um it's you know it's it's a really, really underrated movie, kind of like a hidden gem of a movie, really. This, uh, this, I, I believe it's Vertigo Comics. I know it's, uh, it's an Alan, it's, I think it's Al, Alan Moore. It's based on the Hellblazer Alan Moore graphic novel. And it, it does feel like it's like a hidden gem of a movie, really went on the radar, but it's really a dark movie. This, this DC Comics, uh, it's in the, I know it's in the DC Comics fold in a lot of properties now. You get like Justice League Dark, that character's involved in that. Um, I like this movie though. It's 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 you know it's not an all-out action movie. It's definitely a horror movie at heart, and I, I think Keanu Reeves is proves again even in older movies, more less-known movies, that he is a great performer. And any role he takes on, he can really just you know take that role to the to the limit and take it really to a great really cool place and he, he does in this role as a uh, John Constantine and I, I really liked it I'm not a massive horror fan as well but I really enjoyed watching Constantine uh, on the, the handful of times I've watched it I've really enjoyed each watch uh, let's move over to the other side of uh, this contest and we see Captain Marvel the Brie Larson led uh, solo movie in the MCU the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe 
And this is one, again, I've only watched, probably, I think I've only watched it twice now. I think it was the initial watch, the initial watch when I watched it, I can't remember whether it was at the cinema or, I don't think I did watch this at the cinema. I'm pretty sure this is one I watched at home and, and, uh, on first watch. But there was that, uh, I watched that and then I've watched it for a rewatch for, for the World Movie League uh, for this episode. And what can I say? I think my views upon this film have changed. I feel a lot better about this film now. I feel like a second viewing has definitely changed my opinion of certain parts of this movie. But I do feel like there's still certain parts of me that... Um, certain parts of this movie that I don't feel like it's quite to the level of other Marvel movies. It could be better in some areas. And I, I will get into that when we start, start, start judging this contest um, and this match. But overall, it was it's an entertaining movie. I think it can be improved, but it's a, it's a fun watch. And there's some fun characters, fun moments in this movie. And I, I think, you know, overall, it's a decent enough Marvel movie. It's definitely not a movie that is worthy of a garbage. You know, it, it's, it's not worthy of being classed as garbage, this movie. It's definitely got something there. And hopefully, you know, it will be improved upon in, in later movies when we're seeing sequels to this movie. And this character, hopefully, we'll see a, a, a progression with the main character of Carol Danvers... Uh, Captain Marvel's character as well. But anyway, let's get into judging this competition. So first of all, we have got best characters. And as always, I've ne I've not sort of prejudged anything. I'm going to into this now, best characters, and I'm thinking about the movie right on the spot. I, I like to do it fresh when filming this, so I don't really know what's going to go through, really. So I'm really thinking about the characters here of both movies. I think... You've got to look at the Constantine movie. The main character for me and the most significant character is Keanu Reeves' character of John Constantine. This, this exorcist, this guy who's taking on these demons on planet Earth and he's taking on all these, trying to send them back to hell and stopping them from coming through to Earth. And it's it's quite quite awesome. It's quite awesome to see this character. He's very, you know, very... A Keanu Reeves role in a way, his character very Keanu Reeves-ish, you know, like a very much this this character could could be John Wick, uh, and I don't think that's a knock on Keanu Reeves. I just think he plays a certain role really well, and this is the kind of role he plays. This character who's, who has got personal demons himself uh, through his throughout his life, you know, this is why he got into this role as an exorcist because of things that happened early on in his life. And um, there's a lot of, you know, I like his, the way he connects with other characters. I like his role as this, you know, this badass who's just taking on demons, who's punching demons in the face and not scared to take on these characters from hell. And it's, it's pretty surreal watching it. And I do enjoy his performance in this. Then we move over to Constantine, uh, to, sorry, to Captain Marvel. And I suppose there's, there's a few central characters in this. I mean... You gotta look straight at Captain Marvel herself, Brie Larson, in that role. Um, I think personally, what the character lacks is just a bit of charisma. I feel like it, it, this character of Brie Larson, of Ca Carol Danvers, it's, this is not a knock on the act, on the actress, the actor Brie Larson. I feel like the the actual character Carol Danvers is just lacking a slight spark of charisma, and Maybe that's the way they wanted to have the character is a bit, kind of a bit, you know, not like not enthusiastic to be like happy about things. She, she just seems she just lacking something. I I just feel like it is just a, a, a charisma boost of like twenty percent, and if she got that, it would be great. Uh, I feel like that is what really detracts me from this movie a lot of the time the, the central character just lacks that charisma and i think you definitely get that charisma with characters like you know samuel jackson is is full of charisma he's 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 he adds a lot of charisma and within this movie i think ben mandelson's character as well of um of uh what's it kato uh, 
Talos. I, I like his character, and he, his character adds a lot of uh, humor at times and a bit of charisma into the to the suggestion of the movie. And it mixes in well with with Brie Larson's character of Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, where she kind of lacks that extra uh, bit of momentum in that that category in that in that lane. So I do think that that for me is a big like sort of no no. But I think looking at the um, the characters as a whole, Captain Marvel definitely has a better ensemble cast. We've got Clark Gre Clark Gregg return as Agent Coulson in this as well. We have Jude Law as as the the character of Yon Rog in this as well as the the mentor character to Veers uh, Carol Danvers. And obviously we revealed later on in the movie that he's he has a more different role within this movie as well. Uh, without spoiling too much of this film, but as a, as like as a, an ensemble cast, I feel Captain Marvel is a much better cast. But looking at the characters here in Constantine, John Constantine is a better overall character. So best characters, I'm not judging upon one character. I'm looking at the cast as a whole. Uh, I would say that Captain Marvel definitely has the better characters. So. For the first part of this competition, Captain Marvel wins one point here. So let's move it forward now to best high scoring moments. And this means, you know, what what has, what has the movie as the best scenes? What movie has the best moments overall? Now, I think both movies have great moments. Uh, I think, for me, there's two great moments within Constantine and... I've mentioned this in another video. There's one at the end scene where Keanu Reeves is taking on all, all these demons in a hospital and they're all these patients. And he sort of like says to them, like, you can go in peace or you can take me on. And while this is going on, Shia LaBeouf's character is putting holy water into the to the fire extinguishers in the ceiling. And it turns out the demons want a piece of Keanu Reeves, is John Constantine, they go towards him to battle him, and then he just lights up the fire extinguishers, they come down holy water, they're all going crazy, and then he's got this super, like, uh, gun, I think it's made of, like, silver bullets or something, and he's just shooting all these demons, and it's like the scenes in slow motion in this, like, there's water pouring everywhere. And it's just a great action scene. And that is a great moment. Another great moment from Constantine as well is in the opening moments of the movie when we see John taking on a, a woman who is possessed by a demon and he's got to get the demon into this mirror. And it's just a really cool scene of people trying to... You know, he's saying to people, cover their eyes because you can't see the demon because what it could do to you. And it's just a great scene overall. And it's another... Uh, really cool scene. I think on the other side of things, you know, we got Captain Marvel. There is some great moments. I love the moments for me, like little mo moments, like when Nick Fury at the end is is you know writing out the Avengers initiative, and he sees the Avenger on the plane on a photo of Carol Danvers's plane when she was a pi pilot, and that's where the name the Avengers initiative comes from. I love little moments like that. I love the scenes. A lot, to be honest, a lot of the scenes between Nick Fury and Carol Danvers in this movie are great. I think they've got great chemistry between those two characters. Kind of feels like a buddy cop movie at times with those two characters as well. But um, you, there's a few moments like where <laughs> they're they're in like a cell and he's he's doing like this super trick to open a door, and then a few minutes later you see her like just blast the door open and she's like. He says to her, well, you couldn't do that before. And she's like, yeah, I wanted to see you struggle. And little moments like that, I love the chemistry between those two, which was really cool to see. Um, so what movie has the best moments? So um, I got to say, I've got to say it's got to be Constantine. Constantine has the best moment. I think the fight scenes... I mean, you, look, Captain Marvel has some really cool fight scenes as well. I'm not knocking Captain Marvel, but I love that that particular fight scene with the demons in the hospital. I think it's badass. I think it's awesome. And that is why the best high-scoring moments go to Constantine for me. So now let's move forward to the last part of this uh, 
decisive contest. It's one apiece now. Captain Marvel won, Constantine won. What is my Desert Island movie? So, my Desert Island movie, that is a tough one. <laughs> um, what would I want to sit on a desert island and watch over and over again? I think for me... Oh God, this is, this is hard. This is really hard to, to suss out, but... Look, I think it's got to be, I, I, I don't, I'm not a big horror fan, I, I, I'm not a big horror fan, I'm not a big horror fan, and in general, I do prefer superhero movies, but I do feel at some, you know, watching Captain Marvel, it's a good movie, but it's not, a, it's not got that sparkle to it. It's not got a sparkle where it makes me go, wow, that is a, a whoa, like that, that movie is unreal. That was fantastic. You should definitely watch that. It hasn't got that appeal, appeal to me. And that's what makes me think, you know, Constantine is a lot more different, different movie than that, that I would normally watch. But I, I do get a lot more pleasure from it because of Keanu Reeves' acting and uh, because of this really dark story but I like the story and I like the character of John Constantine I think his character really um I even though he like best characters definitely went to Captain Marvel I like him as a soul character and I think he's a driving driving force through throughout this movie and it's a movie I could definitely I get a lot from because I think it's an interesting movie this and it's an interesting comic book tale that we don't see that often on the big screen so for me my Desert Island movie goes to Constantine. So that means that we have another Group A winner here, and it is Constantine beats Captain Marvel, and it will go through to round two. So now, let's go to the next matchup. Released in 2011, Green Lantern tells the origin story of Hal Jordan, a test pilot who is chosen to join the Green Lantern Corps. The main cast is led by Ryan Reynolds as Hal Jordan, it also features Blake Lively as Carol Ferris, Mark Strong as Sinistro, and Peter Sarsgaard as Hector Hammond, the main villain. Now let's take a look at Green Lantern's opponent. Released in 2019, Shazam is the origin story of Billy Batson, an orphan who is chosen by an ancient wizard to become his new champion by saying the word Shazam. He then transforms into an adult superhero. The film stars Zachary Levy as Shazam and the adult version of Billy Batson, and Asha Angel as a young version of Billy. The cast also features Mark Strong as the main villain, Dr. Savannah, Jack Dylan Grazer as Freddy, and Dijon Halson as the ancient wizard. So now we're on to match number two, and we're seeing Green Lantern taking on Shazam, and... Let's talk about my rewatch of these these two movies. Uh, first off, so Green Lantern, I, I'll be honest, it's one of those movies that a lot of people don't like. I hear a lot of people uh, taking a dump on Green Lantern. And I'll be honest, it's one I've watched over the years and it's not one, I, I, I don't feel like I've, I've had good memories of it. It's been okay, I, again, similar feeling to like Captain Marvel really when I watched that. But I, I, I re-watched that, this movie, Green Lantern, uh, the Ryan Reynolds movie, and what can I say? I think there's obvious reasons why people dislike it. I think the CGI in moments is definitely not great. I think there's some moments where you're seeing the visuals of the suit and some of the characters, and they kind of look like a Xbox 360 game character. It looks like a character from that generation of games, some of the characters and the visuals... Not all of them, I think it's only on certain moments, but I think it's enough to annoy people and I think I can understand that, why people dislike it. But at the same time, I don't. I think there's some visuals that are quite good in this movie as well. Uh, I think that work really well. I think the scenes, there's some scenes with the Green Lantern character where he's creating things that work well with the character. And I don't know, I, I suppose it's a, there's an in-between ground. Some people like it, some people don't. But my rewatch of this was a fun one. It's to me, it's like a sci-fi movie deep down. This movie, and I had a lot of fun watching it. I thought it was a really cool movie to watch, and you know, it was it was a great rewatch. In all honesty, uh, let's move to the other side of things 
with Shazam. And Shazam is a movie that I, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed the graphic novel, first of all. I was a big fan of the graphic novel, the New 52 graphic novel, before even watching this movie. And I was really excited. And I, to me, it lived up to the to what I wanted it to be. I thought it was a great movie. It was kind of like the superhero version of Big. Uh, that's what it is. That's what it kind of feels like. And I know there's a few little nods to Big in this. I think there's a scene in the uh, the big like shopping mall and there's like a piano on the on the floor which is obviously a nod to the piano on the floor in big which is kind of cool but i think it's a cool movie i think it's a fun movie for all the family i think it's really got some great entertaining moments it's got it's got a lot of humor in this movie as well uh, i i really enjoyed shazam i think it's a great superhero movie from dc and it's really refreshing because they're trying to go in a different direction at this point with the dc movies and are trying to do something different trying to sort of like maybe emulate the success what marvelous had in creating different types of movie properties as well along the way so i really enjoyed what they did to shazam as well um but let's let's start judging this matchup best characters so what movie has the best characters um first of all you got green lantern i, I think some of the main characters here you've got to look at you know Ryan Reynolds as 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 Ryan as, as Ryan Reynolds as Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. It kind of feels like Ryan Reynolds is just playing Ryan Reynolds in most movies. Uh, Ryan Reynolds playing Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern, an Air Force test pilot who is chosen to become a member of Green Lantern Corps. And then we've got a few other significant characters. We've got Sinestro, the uh, the mentor within the Green Lantern Corps. Um, played by Mark Strong in this movie. And we've got, well, which is really cool as well, Mark Strong is in both of these. He's in Shazam as the villain, as Dr. Savannah as well. Um, but in, in Green Lantern, we've got a few other characters as well. But I feel like, you know, Sinestro, and then we've got Peter Scar Skarsgård as Hector, the villain in this as well. Uh, move over to Shazam. We've got, you know, Zachary Levy as the adult version of Billy Batson and Shazam. And again, Mark Strong as that, that Dr. Savannah role. And I think it's interesting to see Mark Strong in both of these movies. I like Mark Strong. I think he's a really good British actor. Um, in, in Green Lantern, Sinestro is a good guy. But we see in a post credit scene, he is turned by the, uh, the power of fear to... Obviously, that's where he starts. Sinestro Corps, uh, Corps. I say Corps because it's spelled. This is a thing I never get. Why is it? Why is it? Why is it spelled Corps, but it's pronounced Corps? I, I always find that confusing. I used to always say Corps, and still someone like pulled me up on it and was like, you know, it's actually Green Lantern Corps. Uh, so now I know. Um, that's confusing, and I've still it still gets me obviously now. But uh, I, I think Mark Strong is great in both movies. A really strong character. Uh, let's talk about Green Lantern though. Best characters. I think Ryan Reynolds is is great. I think Mar Ryan Reynolds is great as Hal Jordan. I, I do feel like though this is kind of like a few years to me before Ryan Ryan Reynolds peaks and becomes Ryan Reynolds. Uh, let me explain. I feel like you know Deadpool is when Ryan Reynolds became the star. The superstar name Ryan Reynolds, and I think a lot of people would agree it was his, probably his highest grossing movie, uh, and it's where he has now went on to get more big roles in Hollywood. Um, but I feel like that movie then it was perfect. It feels like we had the best Ryan Reynolds performance, and I feel like every movie before that point was very like it was just like a half, like a you know a half performance of, of Ryan Reynolds. And this is what his character, Hal Jordan, feels like here. It feels like like Ryan Reynolds light. It feels like Deadpool light. And it's not to compare it so much to Deadpool and to other like movies like Free Guy, more of his modern movies. It just feels like it's just not quite there and it's not quite got the five-star Ryan Reynolds performance just yet. Uh, Mark Strong is great as Sinestro. And as I said, Pete Skarsgård as Hector. I think he works well as a villain. It's a very cheesy villain in where, in a way, you know, it's a very, very cheesy at times. His villain, he, he turns into this like big brained uh, guy who can you do stuff with his brain. It's cheesy, but it's fun. I like his villainous role in this. I think it works well within this movie. 
Um, Shazam, on the other hand, we've got Zachary Levy as that main role of Shazam and Billy Batson. I really enjoy him as an actor. I think he's great in this movie. He's got a lot of charisma. Uh, I think he's great in that role as Shazam as well. He's just playful. He's kind of going back to big. You know, it, you, it feels like a kid who is transformed into an adult. He, he just, you know, you look at him, he sounds naive. He sounds stupid. He just sounds uh, not stupid, like intellectually stupid. Just like the things he does is just silly. He just does silly things like goes into, like when they go into the 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 off license and they've seen a robbery going going ahead and then the guy starts shooting him and he's like shoot me again and it's just so um childlike behavior you know of the way he talks and it's really fun and i think they go and get beers after that and then him and his friend freddie he's his uh, foster brother start drinking the beers and they're just like spitting out the beers because they don't like it and then next thing they go back in and they come out with like loads of candy uh which is really cool and uh, so what has the best characters though i think Personally, Shazam has the best characters here. I think overall, Dr. Savannah is a great villain. I think Mark Strong is fantastic in that role, more so than his role in Green Lantern. I think the hero of, of Billy Batson, the young actor who plays him as well, is great. Uh, but the adult version of, of Zachary Levy is superb. I also like the character of Freddy as well. He's foster brother, who is his friend, his ally throughout this movie. And he offers some really great, funny comedy moments and a lot of uh, comedy relief to this story as well. So for me, the best characters have got to go to Shazam. That is, for me, the better characters of these two movies. So now let's move forward to best high-scoring moments. Now, look, I've got to say, there's, there's a few different moments. I think... You know, with Green Lantern, there's some great moments. I think especially the fight scenes where he's, like, creating the the tracks and stuff. And especially in, the, I think it's the first scene when there's a there's a helicopter coming down and he's, he's, he's putting, like, a racetrack and he's imagining a racetrack to get the, the helicopter going down. But then we get to the scene at the end when he's taking on Hector and that's another great scene as well. But... For me, Shazam offers a lot more high-scoring moments here, uh, particularly with there's there's I suppose there's two, there's two in particular scenes. I really enjoyed the scene at the end when you're seeing the family come together and they all get the powers of Shazam. They all have that power to taking on the Eat Seven uh, Deadly Sins. That is a great family moment. I love that. I think it, that's great coming together of this family and they all turn into the adult alter egos of the Shazam family. I love that. I love the scene as well when he actually gets the power for the first time and he says Shazam and he's going in to meet the wizard. That's awesome. I love that, that lure he goes into and all the scenes within the lure is great. But my favourite high scoring scene has got to be the very end moment of this movie <laughs> when we're seeing freddy his foster brother who earlier on in the movie sort of says he's friends with shazam to people and he's going to get shazam to come to to the to the cafeteria to to have dinner with him and then obviously he doesn't turn up everyone thinks he's a loser in school and he's in the cafeteria at the end and oh, everyone's like sort of avoiding him and he's on the table on his own his family come around him all these brothers and sisters foster brothers and sisters and then we see <laughs> we see Shazam turn up and everyone's going crazy. Everyone's going crazy. And he's like, this guy, Freddy, taught me everything I know. He's my man. He's my dude. And he looks at the character of Freddy, who just looks shocked. And I think this is great acting or he was just genuinely shocked for this next moment. Uh, he says, we've also got someone else coming along. And the kid Freddy just looks at him and it looks like he's going to laugh. And then you hear the Superman music and you see it's a body double of, of Superman. We don't see the face and we can't see that it's Henry Cavill. It wasn't Henry Cavill in the role. But we see Superman walking in to the canteen and then Freddy turns around and he's just like, whoa. <laughs> and then it cuts to the credits. But that scene when he turns around he genuinely looks shot, the actor. And I, I don't know whether that is the case. Maybe he did know and it was just great acting. Uh, but I, if you watch that scene on like YouTube or something, or if you watch the movie again, watch that and you'll just see the genuine shock in the actor. He looks shot to see Superman. It's like, it feels like it was a gag on set where they just 
shot him with this surprise bit at the end. I, I love that. And that was a really high scoring moment for me. So for that reason alone, for that great scene, Shazam wins it again. So Shazam wins it for best characters and for best high scoring moments. And that means Shazam does go through to the next round. And I will I will give you my Desert Island movie just out of a, you know a routine of doing this. I wanna I wanna share my Desert Island movie. It would be Shazam. It would be Shazam. It would be a free out of three. And I've got to be honest, I liked Green Lantern. And I, I I do recommend, if you've not watched it, watch it. Because it's a really good sci-fi comic book movie. And it's not a movie that should be dismissed in future. Because it's, it's definitely got some charm to it. It's definitely got something there. And I think the way people, some people dis dismiss it and say like really bad things about this movie... I kind of a bit, you know, you know, it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like, because it, it does deserve more. But, I mean, I, I, just, I just, I beat it down. Free, <laughs> free zero. I, maybe maybe I, I'm one of those people. Maybe I am. Who knows? Who knows? But, yeah, Shazam, I've got to be honest there. Shazam is free out of free here. It's a superb film. Desert Island movie would be, I'd love to watch this on the Desert Island. I could watch this over and over again. It's entertaining. It's um, It's got everything I want in a movie. So Shazam does go through to the next round of uh, matches in the World Movie League. If you enjoyed this video today, please do give it a like and check out the rest of my movie-related content as well. And let me know your thoughts on today's World Movie League matches. Do you feel like the best movies went through? What would be your picks? What choices would you put through to the next round of the World Movie League. Let me know all your picks, ladies and gents. I always love to hear your thoughts on the World Movie League. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, and as always, I will see you next time.